fucking music is dope, isn't it? Yeah. I know, that's why I chose it. So, welcome back, Small Unit Tactics Part 2. Last time, in Part 1, we were discussing the Ranger file and then moving online. So, we're walking here through the woods, whatever it may be, and uh, we're in a nice, neat, awesome, tactical Ranger file. Something happens up here, bop, 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 bop. Contact, contact front, contact front, 50 meters behind that little built up stone wall. Contact front, 50 meters behind that stone wall, all right? Everyone starts reacting to this said contact. We need to what? Get on live. Everybody gets shoulder to shoulder. That doesn't mean shoulder to shoulder like this close, but it means that roughly we're gonna be shoulder to shoulder so that we don't fucking sweep each other while we're putting enemies back down range towards the bad guys. If they're shooting at us, the only way to slow them down and if not stop them is to put bullets back at them. It's like the same thing if you're in a bar fight and some asshole starts wildly swinging on you. Well, you've got two choices. You could fucking run away like a little bitch or you can start swinging on him and move in. And that's exactly what we're gonna do because nobody wants to run away if you don't have to. Let's react to this contact and fuck them up. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move in and then Figuratively speaking, we're gonna get overhooks, underhooks, headbutts, whatever, right? Chop them in the throat, figuratively, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna chop these mother flowers in the throat who wanted to uh, try to ambush us or whatever. So we're all online here. Now, as soon as we react to that contact, we get online, we're gonna go pro. We're gonna fall down onto our stomachs. We're gonna do the best that we can to get behind whatever cover we can, whether that's a tree, whether that's Maybe there's some, you know, some man-made structures here we could get behind. Maybe there's, I don't know, a vehicle, whatever it is. As long as we're online that we can get behind there and, and take it, you know, as whatever cover we can, we're going to do that. Um, but we're not gonna stay there because again, we can't just trade ammunition with them, you know, seven, six, twos for five, five, sixes. We don't, we don't wanna do that. It's a foolhardy mission because really just nothing's gonna happen. We need to take this ground anyway. So we're gonna continue on towards our objective. How do we do that? Well, I'm gonna show you in this uh, part two uh, how the basics of it are done. And then probably in part three, we'll move into some actual counter ambush drills. So what we're gonna be doing is we're all proned out now. We're behind whatever cover we can get and we're trading rounds with them. So we're gonna divide this unit. This is a four man fire team, right? And it sucks because it's a four man fire team. If it was eight men, if it was 12 men, that would be way better, but we've got four guys here. We're a small, small unit, like the freaking definition of a small unit, right? Like, we're maybe like it's a preparedness group, or maybe it's a, you know, a small unit in whatever, Ukraine, whatever, like, it, you get the picture, right? So there's four guys, and who the fuck knows how many bad guys are shooting at us? But we think we can take them, so we're gonna try. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bound. We're gonna divide into two two-man teams, all right? Team one, team two. Team one, team two. So what's gonna happen is one of these teams is gonna stay put for a minute and suppress the enemy. These guys, and again, remember, they're overlapping fields of fire. Hopefully, these guys can suppress the enemy enough to keep their heads down enough while these guys start moving. And what that's gonna look like is one man's gonna decide he wants to move first and he's gonna yell out, I'm moving! Second man is gonna acknowledge that if he can and say, move. Now again, over the fucking noise and din of gunfire and all the stress, this is why we have to rehearse this stuff. This is why we have to practice this stuff. This is why when you, if you ever divide into it, if you ever are in like a fire team like this and you've not rehearsed this stuff and done drills and trained with your guys, good luck trying to do it. It really, it comes down to it. You need to do this stuff a lot as a team to get a feel for how your other guys move. It's very important that way intuitively you guys will kind of know what's going on and it's funny but you'll intuitively also kind of know how your other guys move. So assuming that we're all like able and ambulatory and able to move still, team one's gonna move. Moving, and he's gonna say, move. He's gonna run up and he's gonna just go a couple of feet, honestly. And what that sounds like, you guys have probably heard this before is I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. So I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna run, and I'm gonna fall down. All the while repeating in my own head, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, all right? I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. That's as quick 
as it is to say that is as quick as you're gonna be up and running and moving. So it will take a while to actually get all the way up to where you wanna go, not to mention the fact that your cardio has to be good. It's like doing a whole bunch of fucking burpees in kit, also while you're getting shot at, your heart's going like this, it's gonna, be, it's gonna suck if you don't have good cardio. That's why we PT. So, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, and he falls down to the ground, and he might start shooting a little bit. Now, this guy is gonna say set, all right? So man one is gonna say set, and this guy is gonna say what? Moving. He's gonna reply, move. I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. Now they're shoulder to shoulder roughly again, right? What's gonna happen here? Moving, move. I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. Boom, falls down, goes prone. Set, he starts shooting. And then he's gonna say, moving. He's gonna acknowledge, move. I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. He's gonna say what? Set, so he knows that he's in a good position near him, next to him, he's still alive, like he's ready to still keep fighting with him. Moving, move. I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. Set, move, moving, move. I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, set, and so on and so forth, okay? Now, while these guys are maneuvering, these guys are doing what? They're continuing to suppress the enemy. Now, quick tip that I found pretty handy is how many mags do we have on us when we're out on this patrol? Let's just say it's a patrol, right? Um, six, seven, eight, maybe? Probably not more than that. Like in my Atlas kit, I keep three on each side plus one in the gun. Maybe I'll have one in my butt pack if I get issued uh, eight, eight mags. Sometimes we get seven, sometimes we get six, I feel. So it's like, depending on how much, but you don't wanna just, if you're, especially if you're on this, uh, I'll call it a support element, you don't wanna just bang, 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 and like waste all your fucking ammo. And then once you're dry, you're no good to anybody, right? It's like no one, no one. So, and you're just in danger. So at that point, at this point, you guys who are on this, we'll call it support, um, you need to conserve your ammunition. How do we do that? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to slow down our rate of fire and our guns are going to talk. Now you guys may have heard this talking machine guns before where it's pop, 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 pop. So one gun is firing and the other is either slow at a slow, very slow rate of fire or not firing. And that way they can serve a lot more ammunition. Another way that we can do this with just simple rifles is bang, 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 all right? And so I'll shoot one, he'll shoot one, I'll shoot one. It could be a little bit faster cadence than that, but the idea is we're just trying to keep their heads down while these guys move. Now in between their bounds, can this guy get set and put some lead down range? Yeah, absolutely, he could. And then this guy gets set, he puts a little more lead down range, and so on, right? Now, here's where it gets tricky. There's two ways of doing this. These guys could start maneuvering on the enemy. Uh, that's gonna be more part three of this. This time, what I wanna do is exclude the support element. And you know, I kinda just realized in my own head that I almost fucked up a little bit here. I almost got way ahead of myself. Let's do it like this, guys. So again, moving, move, set, may bound up, like this, and when they get to a certain point, this team is gonna start bounding up again. And it's just going to be this little game of inches, kind of like football, right? It's a game of inches, not miles, until they're close enough to overwhelm the enemy with close combat. And you take care of them like that. That's like the very fucking basic way of doing this, all right? So again, I almost got way ahead of myself and you guys who know, know where I'm going with this, but that's, I'm gonna have to save it for part three. So that's what we do here is we're all online. And again, I, I, I don't know how often this is actually done like this. In fact, I do know how often it's done. We do it sometimes like this, but there's a better way of doing it. But for right now, let's keep it simple, right? Keep it simple and savage. These guys bound up all bound up and hopefully by the time you make it right to the enemy's fucking face you're not all wasted and dead and you've got guys close enough to take the enemy by a somewhat surprise if you have grenades you can toss them at the 
you know, behind cover or whatever, if you have whatever else you have, you can utilize whatever tools you have in your toolkit to take care of these enemies up here. If you just have small arms, then you just have them. You're gonna have to get up close and personal. You know, you might, you might come across a guy hiding behind a tree and have to whack him in the fucking head with your rifle. Um, you might have to take a, a knife out and fucking whatever, right? It's close combat. It's like, that's the serious shit that like our, our ancestors from World War II had to deal with. Maybe you got a bayonet, put it on it, fucking use it, right? So that's the very basics of the bout for the fire team rush. Boom. Just all move up, taking it inch by inch, and hopefully when we get there, we have enough guys to take them. And again, we would only like do this if we thought we could take them. If this was like a fucking hundred guys or even like 50 guys up here, fuck it. If it was like, <laughs> You know, probably more than us, if we thought it was a serious enemy or if they had, you know, like serious weaponry, like we, we probably would do this, but we'd do it in the opposite. So at Tactical Response, in the HRCC programs, we did a lot of this, but we did it in the opposite way because it was all executive protection, you know, contracting stuff based, right? So the premise is that you have a principal with you, you need to evacuate that principal, boom. Terrorists throw down an ambush up here. We're gonna do that same thing, except we're going to be going the other way. And we're going to be firing at them the whole time. Instead of moving forward into them, we would be bang, 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 set, moving, move, and we turn around, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, and then we boom, 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 right? So it was the same thing, just in reverse. That's exactly what we might do if it was an overwhelming force. A lot of the times I feel like in the military end of things, you don't get taught how to like withdraw like that. But again, like it depends what you're doing. And if this is in fact a way more serious force than we can take, we have no choice. What are we all gonna do? Rush in and just get killed? No, we would have to withdraw something like that. I mean, whether it would be withdrawing straight in a linear at them, maybe not. Maybe we would, you know, whatever, something like that. It, it would look something like that, but you have to be aware, and we'll go over this in the next video of, of why we might want to just go straight back, is because um, they might they might also have a support element that if you were trying to come and go on this angle, see my red, they might have guys with guns here just waiting to cut you down. So you might have to bite the bullet, no pun intended, and just kind of do a more linear withdrawal like that. But that's, uh, that's the basics of, if you're walking in your ranger file, and it would be the same thing in other formations, but let's keep it simple right now. Um, you get online, and then we rush forward into them and destroy that enemy force with close combat. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you got something good out of it. Again, my intention with this is not to like, try to appear like an expert anyway, because I'm not, I'm not a commando. I don't like you guys who have been in the special forces. I know we've got plenty of guys out there who watch our stuff that that's what you guys did for a long time. Critique me, let me know what I got wrong. Let me know how could I improve this. My intention is to become an instructor at One Shepherd after I finish all six semesters. Um, so that's why I'm teaching to help give myself a head start and you know, get the jump on this so that I can improve myself. I'll go back and watch these videos and critique myself, but again, please just keep it respectful. I'm trying to be very humble about this. No expert, I'm really, but um, I'm trying to improve myself by learn one, do one, teach one type of thing. Until next time, guys, please remember that you were your first and last line of defense, and I'll see you in our next video. Cheers.